Hi students, welcome to the notes on Gibbs Free Energy. Feel free to pause this video anytime if you need extra time to, to write the notes down or scrub backwards if you need to review anything. Let's get started. Here's the essential question. Please write this at the top of your page. How can we calculate if a reaction is spontaneous and gives off useful energy? Well, Gibbs free energy is the new term we need to learn today, and it's designated by the symbol delta G. Remember, delta means a change in, and then G is Gibbs free energy. Now, Gibbs free energy tells us if there is available energy to do work. And it also allows us to know whether a reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. You might remember or know that spontaneous just means that it happens without nat happens naturally. It, does, it happens without any outside intervention or any outside help. And Gibbs free energy lets us know whether that's going to happen or not. Gibbs free energy is designated by this equation that should be found on the back of your periodic table. Delta G, which is a change in Gibbs free energy, is equal to enthalpy or delta H, which is a change in the amount of heat energy of a system, minus the temperature, and then we have a change in entropy, which is the disorder. Now, delta G, if delta G is a positive value, that means that it is non-spontaneous. You actually have to put work into it. So it's not really free energy, it's energy you have to use to do work. Now, if delta G is negative, that means it's spontaneous. It doesn't require any outside source or intervention, and it actually gives off energy. And that energy is available to do work, to power something, or to be used. Now, delta G, if delta G is equal to zero, that means that the reaction is in equilibrium, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Um, just a quick note, T must be in Kelvin, so temperature must be in Kelvin, and then enthalpy and entropy, delta H and delta S, must be in kilojoules. So you might need to do some conversions. Equilibrium. So equilibrium, if a reaction is in equilibrium, that means the reaction kind of happens in both directions. We're not just taking our reactants and making products. The reactants make products, and then those products turn right back around and remake reactants. So it's an arrow. If you look at the reaction arrow, the equilibrium, the equilibrium arrow goes in both directions, meaning that the, the reaction is constantly going forward and backwards, forward and backwards at a consistent rate. All right, let's talk about this uh, Gibbs free energy equation and what happens when we change different values of it. Uh, besides actually doing calculations, we might just need to look at what's happening in a reaction and kind of guess or speculate what's happening to delta G. Take some time to draw this in your notebook. You might actually want to pause the video and take time to finish drawing this table. We're going to go ahead and continue on talking about each piece. So let's talk about one of the values. Here is an example of an equation. This is a combustion of glucose. So here's our glucose molecule right smack dab in the middle. And then we have six oxygen molecules that are surrounding it. This is going to go through a reaction, and this is a combustion reaction. Now you might predict that in the end of the reaction, we're going to get carbon dioxide and water and a bunch of heat. Let's take a look at this reaction kind of as a whole. On the left, again, is, is glucose and oxygen. On the right is carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Well, what happens in this reaction? Well, we can speculate that delta H, or the enthalpy, goes down. It actually loses energy. That's the energy you see on the right side of the reaction. It's a product, um, so it's losing energy. Now, the temperature, the temperature is going to go up. If you put a thermometer over this reaction, all of the energy being released is going to cause the temperature of the reaction to go up. Now, what's happening to the disorder or the entropy or the delta S? Well, look at it. It's fairly ordered on the left with a few particles. And on the right, we have a lot more particles and it looks a lot more uh, disordered. That's an increase in entropy. Well, if you actually record the value of cellular respiration, the delta G, we're going to get negative 686 kilocals, kilocalories per mole. So in this reaction, it's spontaneous. So we can consider reactions where it's a negative delta H, or if it's exothermic and it's a positive delta S, or if it's going to disorder, as spontaneous. Let's reverse this reaction. So this is the same reaction, but we've reversed it. This is a, a form of photosynthesis. Think about plants turning carbon dioxide and water and energy from the sun back into glucose or some form of sugar and oxygen. So in this, we're just going to just change all the values. Entropy, enthalpy, or delta H, increases. We're gaining energy from the sun. The temperature goes down, and the disorder also goes down. We become more 
ordered or less disorder. Well, the negative or the delta G flips and becomes 686 kilocals per mole. And so we can say that reactions that are opposite, positive delta H or endothermic and negative delta S with order or less disorder is non-spontaneous. Well, let's hit the other two with this example. Here's ice and water. Can you think of an example where ice will naturally melt into water? Well, yeah, that's kind of a common thing when we have a positive delta H and a positive delta S. This happens above zero degrees Celsius. If we take a piece of ice, put it out on the sidewalk in the middle of the summer, when the temperature is above zero degrees Celsius, it's naturally going to do that. Now, we are gaining energy from the sun. That ice is going to melt. And it is becoming more disordered because we have those solid particles that are becoming more liquid. They're spreading around and becoming more disordered. Now, how about the opposite? When does the opposite happen naturally? Well, it happens in the middle of the winter when this happens below zero degrees Celsius. If we take a glass of ice or water and put it out in the middle of the winter, it's going to spontaneously go back into ice. So in this case, it's negative delta H. The H or the enthalpy is we're losing energy because the energy is being taken away and it is becoming more solid. It's also becoming less disordered. We're going from chaotic water molecules to a little bit more ordered ice cubes. So we can fill in the other parts of our table. Both of these can be spontaneous. It just kind of depends on the temperature. All right, let's try to actually calculate delta G. Let's try to calculate Gibbs free energy. It says calculate the value and interpret delta G for the following reaction at 25 degrees Celsius if the value of enthalpy is negative 392.9 kilojoules per mole and the value of delta S is 0 0.3047 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And there's our actual reaction. It's carbon and oxygen make carbon dioxide. Why don't you go ahead and follow me with this example? Here's our, here's our equation we want to follow. And what we're going to do is basically just plug and chug in those values. Before we do that, however, our temperature is not in the proper units. I see it's in Celsius. We need to change it to Kelvin. So looking on the back of my periodic table, there's a conversion where we take 25 degrees Celsius and add 273.15, and we're going to get Kelvin. So now that our temperature is in the proper units, I see that the other units, the other values or variables are in the proper units. We can go ahead and plug and chug these things in. And I'm going to go ahead and get my answer, which is neg negative 483.7 kilojoules. Now, is this reaction spontaneous or is it non-spontaneous? Well, in this case, because delta G is a negative, this is a spontaneous reaction. So that much energy is available for us to use and to do work. All right, here's a student practice. You should pause this video right now and see if you can figure this out all on your own. Don't forget to plug and chug the values where they need to go. You might need to change things according to their units. Um, like for example, in this case, we wanna change Celsius into Kelvin. All right, pause the video. All right, I hope you guys had a chance to practice. Uh, here's the answer. We're gonna go ahead and plug those values in. Uh, if you got 3.302 kilojoules, then you'd be correct. And this reaction is non-spontaneous because it's a positive delta G. All right, here's another example. This one's a little bit more complicated. You could pause the video and see if you can figure it out yourself, or you can go ahead and keep going with me. But if you wanted to figure it out yourself, pause the video right now. If not, let's go ahead and keep going. So in this, we're gonna use the same equation. The difference is, is we have this thing that's at equilibrium. So our delta G, we're gonna equal to zero value. So this one's looking for the temperature. So we need to rearrange the equation and solve for the temperature. So to do that, we're gonna take um, delta H minus delta G, and that's on the, on the numerator, and it's divided by delta S in the denominator. So if I plug those values in, making sure that our delta G is zero, then I'm gonna go ahead and get my answer in Kelvin. Now, it wants it, uh, well, it want, if it was just temperature, this is fine, 334 Kelvin, but I might need to subtract 273.15 to get my Celsius value. All right, guys, that's the end of the notes. Good luck.